Um, I know the y coordinate that is on this graph is going to represent the gradient that is on that graph. So let's trace through the gradient from the left to the right. All the way to the left, this is the graph of y is equal to fx. And my focus is going to be extracting out the gradient for the corresponding x. So when x is all the way to the left, I look at the graph, all the way to the left, what is the gradient? Zero. Uh, in fact, it is small positive number. Okay, It is not exactly horizontal, it is still tilted a little bit. So it's going to be a small positive y coordinate. So it's going to be maybe somewhere here. Because the y coordinate represents the gradient that I see. So the y coordinate is going to be here. Then as we progress, you will become more, more the gradient will become more and more positive. So the y coordinate will become more and more positive. At, until a certain point of time, uh, I can see that the gradient is still remaining positive, but it will start to become less and less positive to zero. So the y coordinate will be less and less positive to zero. And it and it becomes zero when x is equal to minus three. The y represents the gradient that I see there. So y is 0 <clears throat> when x is equal to minus 3. Then after that, the gradient becomes negative and it will just become more and more negative as it goes as x goes to 0. So the y coordinate will become negative and then more and more negative as it goes to 0. Okay, so far you get it, right? Any question? If you have a question, please just type it into the chat, okay? Then after that, if I were to continue to trace through the gradient, I can see that at this point, the gradient is like super positive. Y coordinate is going to be super positive. Then the gradient will become less and less positive going back to zero. So the Y coordinate will be less and less positive since the Y coordinate represents the gradient that I see there. It will go back to zero when X is, my, when X is two. So two, zero. Then after that, the gradient becomes negative and you will just become more and more negative. So the Y coordinate will become negative and then just become more and more negative and then after that, the gradient is like super, super negative and then slowly become less and less negative. So the y coordinate is like super, super negative and less and become less and less negative until a point where it becomes almost horizontal again, but it's still having that little bit of tilt. So it will, it will go closer and closer to zero, but never actually touching zero. So it will go to zero from the negative side. So we will have uh, something that is like this. Okay, so with this, with this analysis, right, we can already sketch the entirety of the graph of y is equal to f prime x. Okay, but I know, I know, I've missed out some details here. And that is why these few details that I have missed out, uh, which is going to cost me marks, can also be, be, <coughs> be patched if we can give ourselves, if we can plan for it first. Okay, we know by doing this analysis, we can really draw the shape of the graph. But to make sure that I get it entirely correct, I'm going to make use of some, some uh, I mean, the, the instruction that I shared with you. It is something that is not 100% necessary because I personally don't use this set of instruction. But in case some of you, after your promo, you find yourself still struggling a little bit with sketching the graph of y is equal to f prime x, I want you to take a look at the differentiation outline under application of differentiation. On the very first page of the differentiation application outline, you see me sketching the graph of y is equal to f prime x. And I give you these four steps. Again, these four steps are not necessary, but they are good to have so that all the details are going to be fulfilled in your final graph. Let me write down the four steps here. The first one is I'm going to try to ignore the x-axis. The reason why I want to ignore the x-axis, which I find it awkward, you know, every time when I explain about this, I find it very awkward to do that because I don't really know how to explain to you guys who didn't read that much wrong answers. But because I read a lot of wrong answers, I can see how common it is for students to, <clears throat> to really focus on points that are like this. Okay, this is the original FX graph. Then for points that are like this, some students will just go and draw a vertical asymptote from the transformation which is wrong, I mean, vertical asymptote, yes, it is for 1 over fx. So just to reduce the possibility of careless mistakes, I'm going to try to ignore the x-axis. The moment when I ignore the x-axis, it just immediately tells me that for the graph of fx, regardless of whether I push it very high up or move it very low, I'm still going to be generating the same graph of y is equal to fx. Because for the same x, the gradient, regardless of the, whether the graph is very high or very low, the gradient remains exactly the same. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to try to visually ignore the x-axis. The second thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the original graph and looking at all the asymptotes, transforming the asymptotes first. 
Then the third thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find easy points to plot on my transform graph. Easy points will be points where f prime x is equal to zero. Easy points will be in general where the gradient is bigger than zero or in general where the gradient is less than zero. And the, fourth, and the fifth one will then be what I have just done here, doing an analysis from the left to the right. Let me just very quickly make use of these few steps to redraw the graph again. And this time, I just want to make sure that, I, <clears throat> that all the details are properly planted in. Um, so I'm going to end off okay, by just redrawing this graph one more time. Okay, first I'm going to visually ignore the x-axis. I'm going to just uh, put a sticky tape on your eye so they can remove the x-axis. Then uh, next, I'm going to work on all the asymptotes. So looking at the original graph, looking at the original graph, I'm going to work on the asymptotes. Uh, there's a horizontal asymptote, y is equal to 2. And our focus is on the gradient. So for y is equal to 2, the gradient at the 2 end because y equal to 2, this horizontal asymptote is the behavior of y when x tends to plus or minus infinity. At the 2 ends, the gradient tends to 0. So I know that y is equal to 0 is likely going to be the new horizontal asymptote on the graph of y is equal to f prime x because the gradient tends to 0. There's uh, two vertical asymptotes. One is when x is equal to 0. The other one is when x is equal to 3. Vertical asymptote will remain as vertical asymptote. The reason is because... When x is equal to 0 and 3 on my original graph, fx is undefined. That is my definition of vertical asymptote. When x is equal to 0, fx is undefined. So when x is equal to 0, what do you think is the gradient? Undefined. There's nothing for you to find the gradient. That is why x is equal to 0 is going to continue to be the vertical asymptote. That is why x is equal to 3 is going to be the vertical asymptote. Next, I'm going to work on easy points. f prime x is equal to 0. There are two points where f prime x is equal to 0. Just now we have talked about it. Minus 3 and 2. These are the two places where the gradient is 0. So I know that my graph is going to be passing through two points. One is when it is at minus 3. The other one <coughs> is when it is at 2. So I have this. Next, uh, this, this is very, very useful. I do think um, when I read your script, right, I, I cannot remember who, like, okay? Uh, someone did it wrongly because I suspect that you didn't draw, you, you didn't go through this step four. It, it, it looks like very easy when I discuss with you now, but it is, the, it is the part that is going to be probably saving you during the exam, you know, when you're rushing for time. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just look at my original graph and just in general, right, see where are the positive gradients, where are the negative gradients. I can see that to the left-hand side of minus three, all these are positive gradients. So I know my graph must reside here. The y coordinates must all be positive when it is less than when, when I'm looking at a region that is less than minus three. Then from minus three to zero, the gradients are all negative. So from minus three to zero, my grid, my y coordinate must be negative. Then from zero to two, from zero to two, the gradients are positive. So if zero to two, my y coordinates are all going to be positive. So my graph is going to reside on top. Then from two to three, the gradients are negative. So my graph resides here. This part, the gradient is also negative, so my graph is going to reside below. I just, I just want to indicate somehow, you know, like my graph resides here, my graph resides here. Then after that, I'll just go from the left to the right. Just like how we have analyzed it just now. All the way to the left, the gradient is a small positive value, so the y coordinate is more positive. Then the gradient will become more and more positive, and then less and less positive. So the y coordinate will become more and more positive, less and less positive, back to zero. Then after that, the gradient will just become more and more negative and then continue to become even more negative. So from minus three to zero, the y, the y coordinate will become negative and then just become more and more negative and continue to be negative. You will tend towards this, you will tend towards this vertical asymptote. Then after that, from x is equal to zero to x is equal to two, the curve curve this way and I'm so tempted to draw this. I'm so tempted. Okay, from x equal to 0 to 2, I look at my graph, it looks like this. As I am tempted to draw this, I realize that I have warned myself previously that my graph should be here. Unless I've seen the gradient wrongly, or and unless it's either I was wrong just now, or I must be wrong now. At least it tells me that, hey, just do a quick check. So I, did a, I do a quick check now, I realize that Whoa, okay, the tick was correct. It is all positive gradient. And it starts from a very positive gradient and then slowly goes to zero. So I have this. 
Then after that, you'll become negative gradient and negative all the way. So the y coordinate will become negative and then negative all the way. Then after that, it will be a negative gradient slowly goes to zero. So you will have a negative y coordinate and it will slowly go to zero. Okay, so this will be my graph of y is equal to f prime x. Any question?